Now, what are the duties of an IT auditor? So as an IT auditor, uh, your main duty is to check the organization's compliance posture, right? So you are checking this against whichever framework you are auditing them against, or you are auditing them for, regardless, uh, the English people can correct me on that one, right? But simply you are checking them to make sure they are in compliance with whatever framework they have to stay in compliance with. And now the question comes in as, uh, what can an organization be liable for maybe four or five uh, frameworks that they have to stay in compliance with? Yes. So that you know brings the whole uh, uh, very complex you know uh, audit or GRC area within organizations, right? So an example, an organization that accepts credit card, debit card, uh, that stores, transmits, or process these uh, cardholder data, they have to stay in compliance with PCI. Right? If this organization is a, it, like it's a hospital or is in the health industry, for the sake that just because of they are in the health industry, they have to stay in compliance with HIPAA. Right? So that is two frameworks right there. Right? So let's say if this company or this uh, organization works for the government or they are a government agency, they have to stay in compliance with FESMA. They have to stay in compliance with uh, RMS, right? So that is what, four frameworks right there, <laughs> okay? And if like, let's say they also have their own software, health so software that they are also selling to other uh, entities, then they have to also stay in compliance with SOC2, right? So. Uh, one organization can might have to stay in compliance with more than two or three uh, frameworks, right? So whoever the GRC team is, they have to make sure they are working back and forth uh, with you know uh, the members within the team and assigning uh, different frameworks to different members of the team, right? So it's always uh, advisable to have an expert in each of the frameworks, right? So for uh, all the job descriptions that you see uh, that will have a line in there. It's probably like an analyst job. It will have a line in there that states that, oh, you should have, you know, working knowledge of PCI, ISO. We have, you have all of it. It's a working knowledge. You can, you know, to be an expert in all of it, uh, like it's going to take you years, right? So maybe probably you had the privilege of working uh, with like PCI for a while, and then you switch to work with ISO and you switch to work with that really uh, for jobs that will just you know list all of them in a line you just have to have a good working knowledge of it right so it's not like they if you don't have if you are not like as like an expert in it they are not going to pick you for those jobs there are a lot of students like our students who got jobs and those were in it and they didn't know all the frameworks right at least they know this is this that is that they probably use one or two but not all of them right so Organizations, uh, it, it it can get a bit complex for organizations when it comes to the auditing side, because if they have to stay in compliance with more than two, three, four frameworks, uh, then that if they don't manage it well, it can be prob uh, problematic. Right? So as an auditor, your main job is to assess the compliance posture of the organization. And how you do that is what we talked about earlier, right? So all these, uh, like the compliance posture, Simply, uh, in in very simple terms, we are just trying to make sure that the organization is enforcing confidentiality, integrity, availability, uh, data security, data privacy, and you know security in general. Right now, we have to look at what we are trying to protect, what the framework is trying to protect. So PCI is trying to protect cardholder data, HIPAA, health, uh, PHI, that is your personal health information, uh, FESMA. Uh, protecting uh, government uh, information, right? And like the list goes on, right? So uh, if you understand this, it makes things a bit, you know, uh, easier and you have a better appreciation of IT auditing, right? And for, before I move on, uh, so for everything that I've been saying, right? During the audits, uh, let me tell you exactly what happens. So there is a list of requirements and the requirements are just 
maybe they have to implement multi-factor authentication. They have to do that. They have to do that. Right? So you as the auditor, you are going down this list and you are asking them, hey, provide proof that you have implemented multi-factor authentication. They will bring the proof. And if based on your own judgment, so all audits, uh, let me just put this out there. All audits, if you are, if I'm, I'm auditing you, right, whether you pass or you fail the, the requirements is based on my professional judgment, right? So whatever you have put in place, uh, if I weigh it with the requirements, uh, based on my professional judgment and my experience, if I think you met the requirements, then I check you up that you met it. That is why on my report, there is a place for me to put exactly what you had in place that made me say that you passed the requirements. And reason why we like they have us do it that way is that after I'm done with my report, right at the end of the year, uh, like for PCI, at the end of the year, PCI will do an audit on my audit, right? <laughs> if that makes sense, they will do an audit. So they will pick some of the audit work that I did. They will pick some of my report, and they will go through it and make sure that you know, I know what I'm doing and I'm doing everything right. So if I was checking the box for people that they met the requirement. And what they showed me was like when like nothing close to them meeting the requirement, then PCI will probably, you know, uh, take me to a retraining. And if my uh, all my reports, audit reports are, uh, are problematic, uh, i.e. they have issues like that, right? Um, it, like that shows that I don't even understand what I'm doing in terms of uh, measuring what they have in terms of like the control they have in place and what is being required or like what is required, right? So that is why uh, when people say, you know, the GRC part of cybersecurity is the easiest part, I just want to go in there. Uh, really, you might really want to consider, right? So yes, there are some areas, you know, that are a bit gray. So it's easy for you to uh, leverage skills that you have already to go into those area, but I will encourage everybody to really, uh, if you are just new getting into that area, uh, dig deep into your books, right? Dig, dig deep into uh, invest in training and other stuff that is really gonna help you with your whole holistic understanding of cybersecurity. Because if you don't understand cybersecurity, you don't have a very holistic you know, uh, understanding of cybersecurity, you can't really be a, a good auditor, right? Because uh being at all these aud like audits and framework stuff that i'm talking about it touches on all areas of cyber all i mean all cryptography identity and assets management networking name it it touches on it right so you have to have a good working like a good working knowledge of all these areas be very effective and even as an implementer within an organization uh if your understanding is or if your knowledge there's gaps in your knowledge how are you going to help your organization pass these requirements, right? Because if you read it and you don't really know what you have to do to show that you passed or like you put something in place, then, you know, I mean, uh, you are going to fail that, right? So the next uh, duty of an auditor is to ensure that uh, all policies and procedures have been implemented and they are working effectively, right? So as part of your checks, that is, uh, or these are some of the things that you are going to check. And this cuts across almost all the frameworks, right? And your next uh, duty is to identify any weaknesses uh, within the organization uh, that might enable uh, uh, malicious actors or hackers to gain unauthorized access to sensitive information or sensitive data uh, within the organization, right? And even there are some vulnerabilities or there are some weaknesses uh, within the system that might, you know, uh, that might help employees who might either uh, on purpose or through negligence or accident, uh, you know, do something crazy that might, you know, reveal or uh, will, will uh, reveal sensitive data or they will have access to data that they are not supposed to have access to, right? So these are, this is not by any means everything you have to do as an auditor, but, you know, just a general big, like a big general overview, 
these are the things that you have to do as an auditor.